Hi, my name is Clint Hudson, and I'd like to welcome you to the second episode of a series on feeder hopper and silo design in Bulk Flow Analyst. This week, we're going to look at flow patterns in silos, what they mean to users, and how to obtain results like these. I'd encourage you to view last week's video on feeder belt forces, where we measured and compared results obtained from Bulk Flow Analyst with analytical results. We also saw how changes in the geometry affected those results. Let's get started. The first step in performing such a simulation is in your material characterization. Without accurate material characteristics, your results will always be suspect. So, step one is to perform the material characterization simulations, now available on the DEM cloud. In today's example, I have a silo with a very short cone. The low angle of the hopper sidewalls will prevent the particles from sliding. In order to allow the silo to fill full of particles, and allow the particles to come to rest, I've placed a surface at the bottom of the silo that disappears after three seconds. When the bottom disappears, the particles will be allowed to flow out of the silo. Then I set up the simulation and run it. When the simulation is done, there are a few tasks to perform to analyze and visualize flow patterns. First, we need to look inside the silo to see inside the flow. DemView lets us do this using a tool called cross-section planes. We access this through the display menu. A cross-section plane is a plane defined by the user that allows us to hide particles on one side of the plane or the other. In our case, we only need one plane. We need to view above zero along the y-axis. Once we click OK, it should hide all the particles on this nearest side of the plane. The next step is to colorize the particles based on their position in the z-axis. So we're looking to colorize the particles by layer along the z-axis. To do this, we create what's called a group file. And to create the group file, we need to use Particle Motion Analyst. With Particle Motion Analyst, you make sure that you have the correct POR file open. And I do. Next, you click on the Group ID Analysis, and a Group ID Analysis allows us to create layers along one of the three primary axes at a specific time. If you look at the uh, simulation as it is shown here, 2.934 is the last point in time before the bottom of the hopper opens up and the particles begin to flow out. So this is as settled as the particles will be. So I'm going to use that as my time. Z is the axis. And then a range of Z values from the bottom, which is 0, to the top, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 inches. And then Particle Motion Analyst will create 10 different groups giving them these colors as shown and colorize the particles where they are at this moment in time. Even after they begin to move, they will still retain the color as they fit into these groups. So we'll create a group file. This sometimes takes a moment, so I'm going to pause. And we're back. It's just about to finish up. Now that I'm done creating the group file, I simply close Particle Motion Analyst, go to the display, and tell my display I want to use that group file. And I need to find the file called demo. Here we go. The last thing that I'm going to do before producing a video is to rotate the model so that we're looking directly at this split plane. So I'm just going to click on this button here. And now we're looking directly at it. This is a finished video of a simulation different but similar to that of the model that we've been looking at so far. It's also playing at half speed. You can see that the material is colored according to layers in the Z direction. The particles maintain their color over time, allowing us to view the flow pattern. 
Also in this video, an additional cross-section plane was used to conceal the particles more than a foot away from the center line of the silo. Without removing this additional material, the view of the top layer would be misleading. A thin slice of the material displays the flow pattern more appropriately. In the next few videos, we're going to be able to see how the flow patterns change for different hopper shapes and material conditions. In the videos that I just mentioned, a little bit of movie magic was used to overlay one video on top of another. Thank you for watching. We hope it was a good use of your time and that it will be helpful for you down the road. Remember to click subscribe so you'll be notified when we release other videos in this series. Also, be sure to visit our Facebook page and like us to get updates and other information. Also, click the link here to watch the previous video in the series. Thanks again.